too much of the good thing is a problem. This episode, episode 103 of Horrible Writing, that will that never will work. work. You can't, can't publish it. Seriously? No, 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 no. Oh my god, that's bad. You probably, probably should find a hobby. You ever, ever learn how to talk? Stop. Be happy. Quit quit while you're 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 don't bother me. I've seen better papers. Do you really want to do And my third grade, get up. Welcome to Horrible Writing, the rawest, most candid, in-your-face writing show on the interwebs because none of us have time to suck. Let's do this. Hey everybody, Paul Sadie, your host of Horrible Writing. I hope this finds you well. I hope you're also enjoying this new sound, if all comes out as it should. <laughs> I had the fortune of talking to a few experts in the field, both of whom appear as experts in Novel Idea to Podcast, How to Sell More Books Through Podcasting, which you can pick up wherever you pick up your books, including an audio, by the way. But John McLean of Dog and Pony Studios and Steve Blizzen of many audio projects, but who also owns his own recording studio, had a nice conversation with both of them about a new setup because my mic was dying and or my mixer. I'm not smart enough to know which one it was, but either way, I had some problems. So this is the uh, first episode with a new mic. We'll go back to the old one in the next episode when I do my interview with author Lindsay Schopfer. But for now, (laughs) we're going to time travel a little forward, then jump back in time. I have gone through... My entire summer, almost. And for you all, this episode won't come out until September, though the patrons will get it earlier as well. But summer's over, some big stuff happening. Not good stuff either in terms of professional, but good things in terms of personal slash writing passion. Rip is out there for the world. A thriller suspense. If you're looking for something along those lines, serial killer type stuff, go pick up Rip. Paperback, ebook, and audiobook are out there now. I will even put the links in the show notes for you. So that's the good stuff. The other good stuff about writing is that I'm now done with the second book of a new upcoming contemporary fantasy that. Hopefully, we'll see the light of day in early-ish 2020. (laughs) Um, Two books written, two novels written in two months, July and August. I really buckled down with this idea and got those out, got those completed much more quickly than I anticipated. The first one flew off my fingers. The second one was a little bit more of a struggle, but that's because of some things going on, i.e., Layoff slash unemployment, not cool stuff, not fun. But it is something I'm going to address in an upcoming episode about how to get through that stuff. So a little peaks and valleys at the end of the summer. But all in all, hey, I'm still above ground, so I'm st- <laughs> you can't complain, right? You heard uh, the wonderful interview with Peter Arulian last episode, episode 102, about editing, editors. And I'm really honored to have, to have had him. Upcoming interviews include, like I said, Lindsay Schopfer. And believe it or not, special announcement here. I'm going to actually be talking to author of many genres and famous um, blogger, Christine Catherine Rush. I'm super excited to be talking to her about writing beyond chronic pain. But today... I want to talk about pacing and why it can be a problem, a problem that we might not necessarily see. Now, everybody has an idea of what pacing is, what it constitutes, right? Everybody kind of knows what I'm talking about, but I want to look at a specific aspect of it because of a recent experience I had. 
Those of you who have listened to the show for a long time, thank you. One. Two, thank you for staying around so long. (laughs) But three, you'll know that I've been doing and consuming a lot of audiobooks lately. I wanted to do that because Rip was coming up and I was going to do an audiobook for that because I don't have a fiction audiobook out there yet. I'm so busy with all the things I'm trying to balance work life, resume writing book writing, administering the Horrible Writing Writer Support Group on Facebook. If you're not there, why aren't you there yet? We're really awesome. All these other things that go on with launching a book, actually launching the book, figuring out ads, taking the courses that I paid a ton of money to take and still haven't made a dent in, producing the Stories We Tell podcast. I mean, just so many things. Squeezed in there was studying audiobooks. For the longest time, I'd rejected them. I read books. I enjoyed reading books. Why did I need to listen to audiobooks? Why did I need that expense? You all, writers who and authors, especially those of us on the indie side, we have to be very careful about how much uh, <laughs> we take on in terms of expenses. So I wasn't excited about adding any, but I needed to get serious about what the marketplace was doing, and I'm trying to listen to as many as I can, which has been great because they're all over the place. They really are (laughs) in terms of quality and and talent and production and all that stuff. But in August, you know, those of you who are Audible customers, you know this, you get your credits for each month. I decided I was going to try a fantasy book that had a lot of wonderful ratings on it. And I wanted to listen to more fantasy. I don't get enough time to read fantasy, especially the epic variety. I'm trying to read so many other things about the craft and the business side of writing that I didn't, I don't have a lot of time to squeeze that in there. So I decided to do that through this audiobook. I read the reviews. Everything sounded great. I'm not going to name the book, by the way. But I quit on that book by chapter six. And it's because of pacing. Now, typically when we think about pacing, you think about those action scenes, the the peaks and the valleys, the low scenes, making sure you don't have too many of them overall in the entire structure of the novel. But then you break it down, right? You, You start segmenting it to help you check whether or not your pacing is appropriate for the book, the story, the genre. Sometimes authors will get lost in the minutia. They'll look at pages of exposition and really focus in on the fact that, hey, this really bogs down the story. Totally agree. Or those who have nothing but a a conversation going on for 20 pages. Might be too much, too intense, slow things down, ratchet it down a bit, right? But I want to ask you to go even higher than that, to pull up above even those trees. And I want to use this book as an example. And again, I'm not going to give you the title of the book. I don't want to name and shame anybody. I'm sure, uh, well, I know, This book is much more successful than any of mine, so who am I to talk? But from a reader's perspective, and as someone studying the craft and trying to see how to do it right, I can only go on my experience, and I know what that experience taught me. And that experience was uh, that this author has a pacing problem. He wore me out by chapter six of an epic fantasy that I really, really wanted to get into and enjoy. And there, here's the reason why. I'm asking you again to pull up to that big perspective. But I figured it'd be easiest to do it this way, to, to tell you, to, to summarize each chapter in a single bullet. So what happened in that chapter in a single bullet to help paint the picture of why this was a problem? First chapter. A small war. 
Second chapter, a big war. Third chapter, a little war. Fourth chapter, fighting pits. Mano y mano, warrior against warrior. Fifth chapter, son terrorized, father stands up for him, fight happens, father's killed. And then, to follow that up on the sixth, with a training war. You can see what happens. Six straight chapters of fighting. Different varieties. And maybe the author got lost in that. That there's a difference between a hunting slash scouting party fighting bandits in a forest versus a bunch of initiates going through their training and fighting, right? These are totally different. But au contraire, no, they're not. They're all basically the same thing. I like fighting. I love a good, especially medieval, fight. Swords and shields and blood and all. I love all that stuff. But I don't need it for six straight chapters. I don't need it for three. I was actually starting to get tired <laughs> by chapter three. But I plugged on, because it was an audiobook, for three more chapters. By chapter six, I realized... I wasn't even listening. The earbuds were in. There was sound entering my ear canal. But that's all that was happening. I wasn't even consuming the story. I wasn't enjoying it, but I wasn't even to the point where I was engaged. I was completely disengaged. It was simply background noise at that point. So I ask you. Do you want your book that you've been working so hard on to become background noise for somebody? No, we all know the answer to that. You don't. So I challenge you, go back through your book chapter by chapter, and I need you to get comfortable with taking a bigger picture perspective. In the military, we used to call it the 40,000 foot view. You get up 40,000 feet above the battle space to see what's going on. So you can see the big picture. So I need each and every one of you to take your 40,000 foot view. What does your book look like chapter by chapter? What is the big thing in each of those chapters? Use this as an example. Sure, there's all kinds of subplots in those little bullets I gave you. There's love, there's hate, there's revenge, there's sacrifice. But all of that gets washed away with that consistent scenario, situation that affects the pacing, that fighting. He never gave us a chance to breathe. So look at yours, chapter by chapter. What is the big thing that happens? Are you doing it too often? Are you doing it for six chapters straight, right at the beginning where you're going to lose people? Do you just do it too often? Look at those things. Look at the big thematic elements of your story and see, maybe it's the, you have the inverse problem. It's still a pacing issue, but you've got nothing really moving for too many chapters. Only you will know the answer to that. But it is something to look at and to examine. Because you don't want people setting your book down at the sixth chapter. You want them all the way through, engaged and enjoying, not suffering through it. Pacing is a key to that. I hope this helps each and every one of you take a different look and and to keep something else in mind as if we don't have enough to think about already. But to keep something else in mind as you're creating that next masterful piece that you're working on. If this has been helpful, leave a rating and review on your podcatcher. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you to everybody who does do that. Additionally, if you want some bonus content, if you want exclusives, if you want insight into some of my stories that I only give to patrons, if you want special deals on books, things like that. Go support the show. You can do that by going to paulsating.com, clicking on the support tab, 
to find out how you can do that two different ways to get that done. Make sure that you're subscribing to the stories we tell. Episode 7 is coming out this month at the end of the month. Another wonderful collection of amazing stories from diverse authors. So definitely check that out. And until episode 104 with author Lindsay Schopfer, keep being epic. This has been Horrible Writing, and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sating, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse at Writing Horrible and over at paulsating.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less. Yeah.